Hello guys, welcome. I'm going to teach you guys today how to create a responsive email template like the one you see before you today. I made a previous video about this, but it audio wasn't that clear, so I'm making a second video on it. So, making a responsive email template is key because 60% of all emails are open on tablets and mobile devices as of last year. Now, you want one that will display well on a computer, as you can see in front of you here, and one that will scale down based on device size without have to be without have to include a whole bunch of CSS to do so. So, while the CSS is still on the heavy side, it does achieve what we want to achieve. And I'm going to go over some fundamentals of creating um, email templates. When you build email templates, you want to have a large header, but something that's not overbearing on the eyes. Users tend to click away and not or not click at all in emails with overbearing headings, like really large headings. You want to have a simple image that tells the user what the email is about, so to speak. If you have a lot of text, like I have in mind, you want to break it up in columns. Usually you want to stick to one column in your emails, but if you happen to have a lot of text, as I have in my case, you want to break that up in columns so it's not overbearing to the user to read. Now keep in mind, if, you're, if your um, message is targeting mobile user, then it doesn't matter how much content you have in the email, you want to stick to one column. Because it, if you size this down, which I'm going to show you here right now, even on a mobile device, it will still be in two columns and it will be hard to read. So you definitely want to stick to one column if you're targeting mobile, which I just told you that most applications are open in mobile device so but I'm just giving you the options so you know what your options are let's jump into the text editor and I'll show you a few things now in my text editor I have an external style sheet which on emails for uh, for templates and emails you cannot have an external style sheet so all this is going to be wrapped in inline codes and I'll show you how an, an easy way how to do that here in a minute um, so for the body, I set a font size of 68%, which means I'm controlling my own font size. It doesn't matter what client they're viewing it on, whether they view it in G Gmail, Outlook, it doesn't matter. You know, the, you're controlling how things look once to the user. My wrapper has a five a max width of 500 pixels, which means it will only go a maximum of 500 pixels wide. But if it goes below that, it will start to respond to the size of the screen. I set a background on it, just a little dark background, just to have you know the email uh, look really nice and design good. Text is centered in it, and I put a, a nice radius of 5 pixels on it. I put a line height of 1.5. Now, a lot of you might be wondering why I didn't specify a value like 1.5 pixels, 1.5 REM, 1.5 EM, and so on. What happened is, when you specify a line height of 1.5, we have a 68% font size up here so what this does is it goes time and a half whatever our font size is which always make for really nice spacing so it doesn't matter what device it gets on the spacing will maintain time and a half of the font itself and that's why I like to use 1.5 with no values versus 1.5 pixels or any other values specified on it and the header I always use REM because REM gives a REM gives a, a more fluid and a more dynamic value. Let's say on the user's email client, it allows them to scale up font size and down font size based on their how well they can see. REM will allow them to do that. If you set pixels, they cannot do that on a pixel-based font, and which is why I like to use REM to give users more control over what they do. The image I usually set at 100 pixel, pixels in width and zero and margin and padding. Now, the paragraph tag, is, which is where we have all the, the text wrapped over here, as you can see, is in a paragraph tag. And I set my paragraph tag, excuse me, to um, 0 0.9 REM font size, and this is the column. Like I said, for me, I would go without the column, if, if I were you, and just leave the email as is. You can also set specific... So you see, it's still not that bad, even without the column. You can also set specific um, column display based on screen size, but that's where it gets a little technical and things breaks down. So you always want to try and go as simple as possible. Now, 
There's some psychology behind designing email templates, and I'll share a few of it with you today. You always want to have a, back, a backdrop of a darker backdrop, and where the content is, you want to have white. You know, because that gives the user an area, a border. So you create a border here to tell the user eyes to stop looking beyond here and focus within this border. And I know a lot of you might think it's BS, but it, it, there's a lot of research behind it. You also want your, your header to be centered. Never have your header your header or your title text off to the left. You always want your title text centered. You always want your main image to be 100% of the size of whatever your email container is. You always want to have a little padding around the area to ease the view of the, uh, the viewing of the uh, on the user's eyes. 1.5, I say would say 1.5 line height to give some spacing between the text. That way you have this text spaced out, but not too much. You do not want to have like a double double space verse in, um, type layout because that gets hard to read and make it seems like you have a lot more content than you do on the page, which nobody likes to read a whole bunch of content. At the end of your content, you want to put a clear and concise call to action. Learn more. Click here. Download application, whatever it may be, whatever your app may be, whatever your email may be about. You might be product images or whatever it is. So if it's a product image here, then you want to have on the image a click here button or view now or something like that if it's product based. Now at the bottom, you always want to give the user the, the ability to unsubscribe from your newsletter. I know that might seem counterintuitive, but if you force the user to always receive message from you when they don't want to, even if they're interested in your message, sometimes they'll just add you to spam because you do not give them a choice. They'll read and if they see an unsubscribe button, sometimes they'll read through your email and go, maybe I'll unsubscribe later. Maybe I'll, let's see what this is about um, and I'll keep re um, receiving messages from them until I want to unsubscribe. But they know you give them the option of unsubscribing. You always want to add a contact us link. Just in case your unsubscribe link doesn't work, the user doesn't feel like they're trapped into your email, they could click a contact us and reach out to you and say, hey, I'd like to be removed from your email um, list. And, you know, I know it might seem like that's not what you want in an email. When you send it out, you do not want people to unsubscribe. But giving them an option usually keeps them around long enough. So those are the things to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is keep your, your um, viewing area of your email pretty small. You do not want a wide view area of your email because nobody... The, the goal is to keep the user looking straight ahead and reading your entire content rather than turning their head left to right to get to the end of your sentences. When you do that, people tends to click away because it becomes tedious and I know it sounds stupid. I, I trust me, I get it. I never believe it myself until I realize my own habits when I read. If I am on a large screen and you take up the entire screen with words, if it's pictures or images, it's fine. But when you take up the entire um, screen with text, nobody wants to read it. You know what I mean? Think of it this way. This is why newspapers use columns. They force you to read straight down. You focus on one column, you read to the end, you move on to the next column, you read to the end, the next column, you move to the, you read to the end without have to be scanning your, your head um, left to right or right to left. It makes a newspaper easier to read and there's a lot of science behind it. So don't put yourself out there, you know, stick to what's been proven to work. So I'm going to show you how to convert this now over to just an inline text. There's a really useful tool called inline.cm. It's inline.cm. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my text editor on my HTML. I'm just going to click control A, copy, and I'm going to paste this entire text inside here. And then I'm going to generate an inline text. Now the inline text is already generated. If you scroll here, and down to the bottom, you'll see that the inline text is generated. No, it's not, which is strange. It's usually be. Give me one second here. Okay, sorry, you know what I did right? This wrong. This was my my mistake. You need to have this the the um the style in the head tag of the page that you're trying to convert. So I create a style tag right here. I'm just gonna paste the CSS code in and click save. Control A, copy. My apologies for that. I forgot that this text, this editor doesn't do the same as the ones I, I've normally used. So paste, and you're gonna click make inline. Now, if you scroll down here, 
See, it adds all the style to the tags that you need. So control A again, copy. And then when we go into a text editor, we delete this, paste this in, and then we, now we can remove the style tag from here, from the body tag. And everything should work fine. Now if we go out to our browser and refresh again, this is our email app. See, nothing changed. Everything looks exactly the same, but now the style is inline. So this is this allow you to design how you're used to design, how you're comfortable designing. And then you can convert it later. It, it's, it's a seamless one-click process, and you don't have to spend a whole bunch of time trying to put all your CSS inline. Now, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helped. If you guys have any questions on developing um, responsive email templates, put your comments below, and I'll respond as quickly as possible. Happy coding.